Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Western Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We've got a good session today. Before we get started, let me cover a few housekeeping items. First thing I'd note is that if you have any questions, you can use the Q&A button to type your questions to the presenters at any time. Also note that your camera and microphone are off. The panelists can't see or hear you. So again, if you have questions, use the Q&A feature. Also note that we have additional sessions available on the StriveScan website. So if you have interest in those, please go and sign up accordingly. Also note that the recording will be available after the call about one week on the StriveScan website. You can see the website there, strivescan.com slash WACAC. With that, we will turn it over to our first presenter from Loyola University, Maryland. Just share my screen real fast. Hello, my name is Michael Decker and I am with Loyola University, Maryland. I am actually our Western Regional Rep. So I work with all of our students from the West Coast. I'm based in San Diego. And um, hopefully when things settle down, I, I will um, be able to meet y'all in person. I know the first thing people will ask me is, well, where are you located in Baltimore, Maryland, or in Maryland? If you've ever been to the Inner Harbor, we're about 15 minutes from the Inner Harbor. So we're in a residential neighborhood, but we're close enough to downtown where, like, for example, our business students are going to down and doing internships at places like Under Armour, McCormick and Schmidt. But then we're close enough to places like DC, where our political science students are going to work out uh, on the Capitol, or maybe our um, forensic students are going to do internships at the FBI. And then we are an hour and a half from Philly, we're four hours from New York. So if you want to jump on a train and go up there for the weekend, definitely could do that. Um, but we are a true campus. 83% of our students live on campus all four years. So you're going to get that collegiate experience on our campus too. I know you might have heard of some other Jesuit universities or some other Loyola's, Loyola Chicago, Loyola New Orleans. St. Ignatius of Loyola founded the Jesuits. That's where that comes from. With March Madness coming up, um, there's other Jesuit schools you sometimes hear about. Loyola Chicago, Creighton, um, Marquette, Gonzaga. We're all separate schools, but how we teach is the same. Education, the whole person, and men and women are going to be two of those big themes for you. Um, so when it comes to majors, we have about 3,500 undergraduate majors. Students are minoring, double majoring, minoring, not a problem. You don't have to decide right now what you want to be. Common as undecided perfectly fine, but we do have a phenomenal education program. 100% of our students have jobs before they graduate. When it comes to business, like I told you, all students are doing internships at places like Under Armour. If you're into the stock market, um, students, we have over a million dollars where students are playing with real money in the stock market. Um, and you can get your MBA too. So lots of opportunities in our College of Business. And then our Arts and Humanities too. If you're interested in pre-med, 73% got in a uh, med school, pre-dental 77%. We have a school of engineering also. So lots of opportunities to move around or um, come to some decisions there. Another thing too, is if you wanna study abroad, we do over 40 different countries, two thirds of our students are doing some type of study abroad experience. So lots of opportunities there. 200 clubs and organizations on our campus. So lots of things to do from the ukulele club to our Black Student Union does a fashion show to Student Government Association host Loyola Palooza. My favorite event is late night. Um, where we do things like midnight breakfasts on Wednesday, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. About four, a little under 4,000 undergraduate students are on our campus. Average class size is gonna be about 20. Faculty student ratio is 11 to one. So there's gonna be a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction when it comes to our campus too. If you're in, in the sports at all, we're NCAA division one. We're in the Patriot League, really strong lacrosse program. Um, but then sometimes students are like, Michael, I don't want to play. Um, I've done lacrosse or I've done varsity athletics. I just want to play casually. We also have club sports and intramural sports too. Or if you just want to use our fitness at aquatic center, our students call it the FAC. 
96% of our students participate in the fact. So they might be coming in for intramurals, they might be coming just to work out, or maybe they're doing something like esports. We do esports competitions there too. So lots of opportunities when it comes to that. When it comes to I know applying that type of stuff. We're coming at school. These are actually last year's deadline, but I'm, that'll give you an idea of when our deadlines will be. With common application, there is no separate scholarship application. You'll just apply with the common app and you'll be eligible for scholarship applications. Scholarships will typically range anywhere from 13 to $30,000. And then our freshman profile, this is last year's 3.6. And we are a test optional school. I know we have test scores there, you do not have to take the test, do tests to get into Loyola. We've been test optional for about 10 years. I know that's always kind of stressful for students when it comes to test optional. So if you don't want to take your test, you will not be penalized on our campus, which is kind of nice too. The other thing I would encourage you to do is cut plan a visit to our campus. We are hosting in person, but since you're a junior, why don't we hold off on an in-person visit since it's a little bit different when you'll be a senior, hopefully visiting our campus, but why don't you do one of our virtual events? Similar to this, we have open houses that will be happening, one-on-one -on -one meetings with people like me, or you could do a self a, a student-led tour, or we call Greyhound chats. Greyhound chats can be anything that current students want to talk about. Sometimes they'll talk about a particular major, or sometimes our students will, um, We'll do things like, hey, we're all from the West Coast. Let's talk to our West Coast students, which is kind of fun and exciting. So those are some great opportunities when it comes to our campus and things that we have to offer virtually too. And then also, if I could encourage you to follow us on either social media through Facebook, Instagram, I would definitely say Instagram over Facebook. That's where our students are typically running that for us. And once again, my name is Michael Decker. And if you have any questions or you need anything, feel free to email me. I'll actually drop my email into the chat after this. Thank you much, so much for your time and have a great weekend. Thank you so much. We're on to our next presenter from the University of Maryland. All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Larry Kalanji, and I am the Regional Admissions Coordinator for the University of Maryland, based in San Diego. Hi, Michael. Um, I manage all the West Coast territory regarding recruitment, as well as review student applications um, for the West Coast territory. Um, so just to get started, I would like to share a few distinctions about University of Maryland. Uh, UMD is now ranked number one according to U.S. News and World Reports. Last year, we were ranked number 22nd, and so we take pride in our students, faculties, and staff members to make this great strive. Uh, whether if it's from our research, leadership laboratories, the rankings are based on more than 15 measures of academic quality, including graduations and retentions rates. Uh, so we're very proud of these distinctions and continue to foster excellence each and every year. We're also ranked number 10th and number 16th best value for in-state students and out-of-state students, uh, respectively by Kiplinger's personal finance. We're also ranked number 11 among public universities by Forbes America's best co value public colleges. Uh, we have 19 Division I NCAA teams, and recently we were voted for number one best college for LGBTQ students by Campus Pride. At University of Maryland, we have 12 academic colleges plus letters and sciences, which is an advising house for students that are undeclared or undecided. Uh, here we have over 90 academic majors and programs to choose from. A uh, student can also double and triple major or declare a major and minor in, a, in another subject. Our most popular majors are computer science, criminal justice, business, government politics, biological sciences, and engineering. Some of our majors are limited enrollment programs or LEPs. Uh, because of their strong reputations, they are highly sought after majors and we must limit enrollment to maintain program quality. As a result, these programs have competitive requirements beyond the admission standards of the university. The environment and the setting of your studies is a leadership lab. University of Maryland is uniquely positioned right outside of Washington, D.C. Beltway. 
uh, students can enjoy the abundance of cultural, professional, and recreational opportunities Washington, D.C. has to offer. Many of our students decided to intern or work for federal agencies, nonprofit organizations, cultural experiences, and the National Smithsonian Museum. We are about 10 miles from the White House and about 20 miles from our state capital, Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, UM, this year, UMD has decided to extend um, the SAT and ACT score optional for the spring and fall of 2022 and 2023 application. Uh, this means that test scores are not required to complete your application. Your application will still be reviewed holistically using the 25 admissions factors that are qualitative and quantitative in review. You will not be disadvantaged by deciding not to submit a test score. However, if you decide to submit your test scores, ACT or SAT, they must be official test scores sent from the testing agency. Uh, when you apply, there will be a, uh, a box uh, if you plan to submit uh, your test scores or not. Once submitted, uh, that decisions cannot be changed. Uh, and so think carefully if you plan to submit your test scores or not. Um, again, you will not be disadvantaged for not submitting your test scores. And once submitted, you will not be able to change it back. Um, so think carefully, uh, definitely have a conversation with your parents and your counselor uh, regarding submitting your test scores or not. Uh, we do require two letter recommendations, one from your teacher and one from your counselor. Recommendations letter can speak uh, your resilience as a student, uh, your ability to lead and your work ethic and the classroom. Uh, we do require an activity list or a resume uh, in order for your application to be complete. Uh, so this is your time to talk about everything you did outside of the classroom. Uh, we do have a $75 application fee for processing the applications. Uh, you can also get it away from the coalition or common app as well. Uh, we do requ require an official high school transcript from your counseling office. Uh, transcript can be submitted electronically through Naviance or mailed directly to the university. Uh, we do also require one essay. You can choose the topic to write from the Coalition app or Common app, or you can choose to write an open topic essay. Uh, the purpose of the essay is for the admissions committee to learn more about you as prospective students. Uh, since we do not have an interview process, your essay can definitely set you apart from other applicants. While grades and test scores are important, we love to see well-rounded students involved in community service, health literacy opportunities, and club involvement, uh, if you play any sports or working well in high school. So it is just not test scores and GPA. Uh, so thank you for joining me to learn more about University of Maryland. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to Maryland at umb.edu, and I will also uh, put out my um, personal email on the chat. Thank you. Larry, thank you so much. We're on to our next institution, the Catholic University of America. So, right. Hi, everyone. My name is Catherine Pierce. Um, I am one of the assistant deans of admission at Catholic. Um, I work with students from the West Coast, but I am based in DC. Um, so we were founded in 1887 as the National University of the Catholic Church, but also as a graduate research university. So we're actually the second oldest graduate research center in the United States with 31 on-campus research centers. Um, we are a very welcoming community with about 3,100 undergraduate students. Um, being a Catholic University of America, about 80% of our students do self-identify as Catholic. Um, of course, you don't have to be Catholic to attend. We are welcoming to all. We've got about 30% diversity, 8% of our students um, that are coming from international areas, and we do have students from all 50 states as well. Um, we have what we like to call the DC Advantage. Um, we are located only three and a half miles from um, the Capitol. Um, we are right on the red line at the Brooklyn CUA stop on the Metro. So it's very easy um, and accessible to get around town, um, not only for fun and enjoying all that DC has to offer, um, especially with cherry blossom season coming up in just a couple weeks, um, but lots of different opportunities for students to take advantage of um, the DC area for internships um, and for additional research opportunities outside of what's offered 
offered on campus as well. What's also great though, is that we also have the largest residential campus in DC. So while DC is definitely your playground in your backyard, we have 176 acres that we are able to call our own. Um, we have 12 different schools that our students can choose to study from. Nine of them pictured here are undergraduate schools. And we have 79 undergraduate programs, 144 graduate and doctoral programs. We also have 68 minor and certificate programs. So there's something for everyone. Our class sizes are small, the student to faculty ratio um, is about 10 to 1. The average class size is about 19 students. So faculty get to know you really well. They get to know you on a first name basis. So it's great that you have a really individualized academic experience um, here at Catholic, which is wonderful. We also have study abroad opportunities as well with 115 programs on um, in 37 countries and about 40% of our students choose to study abroad. We also have our own campus in Rome, which is really wonderful. Um, we have an awesome community at Catholic with over 100 clubs and organizations from academic clubs to cultural clubs to everything in between. We even have a make your own club club. So if there's a club or organization that you're involved in in high school and you want to continue that in college, you're able to do that here at Catholic and create your own club here. We have a very big campus ministry presence um, on campus as well. We're all about meeting you where you're at in your faith. If you're looking to grow in your faith, lots of different opportunities, whether or not you are Catholic. Um, and community service is also really big as well. We have 25 different Division three um, at Varsity Athletics too. This is our application timeline. We are exclusively available on the Common Application um, with our early deadlines being November 1st and our later deadlines being um, January 15th. No matter what deadline you choose to apply for, your application is reviewed the exact same. And we look at the following items um, when we're going through your application review. We take a very holistic approach. So we actually recalculate every GPA that crosses our desk on an unweighted 4.0 scale. And we put that weight back into what we call strength of curriculum, where we look at what you've taken in high school in comparison to what is offered at your high school. Um, um, we do not charge an application fee, so it is completely free to apply and we are test blind. So we are no longer considering test scores as part of the admission or scholarship process. We are automatically reviewing our students for merit awards. Um, those range from about seventeen dollars to $30,000 a year and they are renewable for all four years. We have two um, scholarships that you would need to apply for on the common application. The first is the parish scholarship, where if you belong to a Catholic parish, you can apply for this um, and fill out the information that's asked and you get $4,000 a year, also renewable for four years on top of the 17 to $30,000. And then we also have a legacy grant. <clears throat> If a parent, sibling, or grandparent attended, and we would just ask for their graduation year as well. We do have a full tuition award that is done through an interview process too. So that's given to about five students every year. So lots of different opportunities for merit award. But as I said before, everyone is fully considered um, for merit. Um, as part of your application review. And then for need-based financial aid, we have the FAFSA and the CSS profile that we require for full review. Um, those of course allow for additional grants, loans, and work study. And we do give our students about 95% of them financial aid or scholarship and $70 million in grants and scholarships that go out each year. Um, so I know it's just a little bit of an overview of Catholic, um, but something to mention as well is that we are um, having visits in person. So obviously, um, you know, we want you if you're comfortable you're more than welcome to come and visit campus this spring we'll continue them again throughout the summer we're doing everything in a safe and socially distant way but we also have a lot of different opportunities um, for virtual options as well if that's a little bit easier but um, while I said before while I am based in DC hopefully when things go back to normal I will be back out on the west coast to hopefully um, meet you all in person but that's a little bit about Catholic thank you so much Thank you. We're on to Whitworth University. Okay, it looks like our colleague from Whitworth is not here, so we will move on to Albion College. Hello everyone, my name is Dana Smith and I am from Albion College in Michigan. Um, I do recruit almost all of our out-of-state students, but am based in Albion. Um, normally I get to make the trip out there and enjoy some beautiful weather on the West Coast. So hopefully that will be able to happen um, later this year. So I'm very excited to share more about Albion with you today. 
I always like to start with a little bit of a summary of kind of the Albion community um, so that you guys can have a really good idea of what it's like to be a part of Albion College as a whole, both as a community member and as a student. Um, so we are a pretty small school. So as you can see, we're about 1,500 students. We are growing a little bit, which has been exciting for us, but still maintaining those small class sizes, really intimate relationships between faculty, staff, and students in our local community. Um, so that's something that we really, really pride ourselves on. Um, I always like to talk about the stories behind the numbers. And so for us, being a small school doesn't just mean that, you know, you get to have these small class sizes and benefit from that, but it really goes beyond that to helping you develop as a full person and having those supports that are going to carry you through not only your undergraduate career, but maybe into your career field, into the graduate field, building those lifelong friendships that are going to sustain you for the rest of your life. Um, so for example, our faculty don't just teach you and then send you back to your dorm or to the dining hall. Um, you run into them on campus, maybe up at the cafe or at the grocery store. They're the ones who are writing letters of recommendation for you, who could probably recite all the things that you're interested in and want to do in the future. So that's definitely a huge benefit of going to a smaller school. If that's something that you think is a priority for you, is that really, really special relationship that develops, not just between you and your peers, but also everyone who's going to be supporting you along your academic and professional journey. Um, some other numbers that we pride ourselves on here are this placement rate and graduation rate. Um, so not only are our students graduating in four years, which we know is really important, especially as you're making your future plans, um, but within six months of graduation, 97% of our students are employed in a profession, um, in graduate school, or doing some kind of service. And that's even higher for some of our professions like education and business and things like that. Um, so again, things that we really pride ourselves on. And we are an entirely undergraduate institution, so our whole goal is to prepare you for your next step. Um, so again, we really get to focus on the students that are coming in. This is their first experience with college, getting that bachelor's degree, and then preparing you to be really competitive applicants at the next step. Talking a little bit about admission, I know it's early for the juniors on the call, but if we do have any seniors, this applies to you as well. Um, Albion is a liberal arts school. So what that means is that we take a very holistic view to you as a student and your education. Um, and that begins right as soon as you are a part of the admission process. So we're not only looking at your GPA, but we're looking at a lot of the things that other schools have mentioned on this call already. So not just again, that GPA and transcript, but you, your academic history, what makes you excited about taking this next step in your educational path. So letters of recommendation, your essay, um, we are test optional, and that will most likely continue for our juniors, although they're still we make that designation, so we'll keep an eye out for that. Um, and we are enrolling admission, so we have a couple of, of deadlines, but those typically just roll over because we review every application as it comes to us. You can see here we have a lot of different academic departments. Um, this isn't even all of our majors. Um, the print would be very small if I put them all on this slide. Um, so you might not see your major on here, but that doesn't mean that we don't have it. Um, all of our students technically come in undecided and they declare their major by the end of their sophomore year. So some students are really set. They'll do it like their first week on campus. And some, like my sister is a good example, declared her double major at the very, very last day. Um, so there's lots of exploration time for you to explore all of these different majors and figure out what's going to be a good path for you. Or if you know what you want to do, then that advising begins as soon as you get here. So you can see some of our more popular programs in the bottom right hand corner. Um, but I would say in general, things we really pride ourselves on are education. Michigan's a great state to get your education licensure because you are pretty qualified in 49 of the 50 states. Um, healthcare and then business as well are all really popular and kind of programs that we're known for. But of course, we know college is more than just the academics. You want to feel like you're a part of the community here and get really excited about that. Um, one of my favorite jokes about Albion students is that their email signatures are typically longer than the emails they send because they're involved in so many things. Um, so we have over 100 clubs and organizations for you to get involved with, and those are open to all students. So no matter where you're coming from, what your background is, you're hopefully going to find something that you're really going to love and that's going to sustain you through your four years here outside of the classroom. 
Um, so Greek life and athletics are both really big. About 50% of our students are involved in either or of these. Um, and then Union Board is our student activities committee and they bring incredible events to campus. Um, even in COVID, they've been facilitating a lot of virtual things or safe socially distanced things on campus. Um, like they just had a glow dance party. We had like a big tent on the quad. They gave up glow sticks and they had a DJ. So super fun in the fall. And they've got a lot of fun stuff playing for the spring as well. And then to end here, I wanna talk a little bit about affordability because we know that financial aid is a huge deciding factor for families. Um, so everyone is evaluated individually. So we do offer need-based aid, um, but families um, send us their FAFSA and that if you're eligible to do that, that's very important for a school like us since we are a private school. Starting at a higher sticker price means that we have a lot more need and gap to fill. So 100% of our students receive some kind of institutionally based aid, regardless of whether you file the FAFSA or not. Um, they'll start with our merit-based scholarships, which range from $23,000 to $34,000. Coming from out of state, you're also eligible for this Forks of the River out of state student grant. Um, and then, like I said, we also offer need-based aid based on the financial information that you guys share with us through the FAFSA. Um, so we really like to, to get to know our families and evaluate those financial aid situations based on you and your family specific situation. So I have lots of conversations about that and I'm more than happy to talk about anyone's individual situation outside of this presentation. So that's what I've got. Um, like I said, I work with all of our out of state students and I'm more than happy to answer any questions in the chat or afterwards and I will pop all of Albion's information into the chat right now for you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're on to our last presenter from Northern Michigan University. Hi, everybody. My name is Erica. I will end us here today. Um, I'm from Northern Michigan University. I can't see you guys, but I'm really glad that you're here. Thanks for spending your Sunday with us. Um, so Northern is located in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We are right along the shores of Lake Superior. Um, so our natural setting makes for amazing outdoor experiences, both academic and recreational all year round. Um, many of our students love the outdoors, but you don't have to in order to thrive here. So we do offer um, direct flights in from Minneapolis, uh, Detroit and Chicago. So if you're coming from the West Coast, uh, this is probably the way you're gonna travel here. But Marquette is a safe, friendly and welcoming community that celebrates all four seasons. So that's something important to keep in mind. We are a mid-sized institution. So that means that we are large enough where we have a lot of programs to choose from, but a strong alumni network, connections around the world, nice facilities, uh, but small enough where you have small class sizes uh, and your professors know your name. So the average class size is about 28. And then when you have um, labs and seminars, those are about 15. And this gives your professors the opportunity to get to know your name and just know you on a personal level. And those close relationships result in mentorship and guidance as you move through your experience at Northern and onto whatever it is you're gonna do next, whether that's grad school, um, a joining the professional world, or even figuring out what it is you're gonna do next. So we have over 170 different programs to choose from. This means that there's a, there's a lot. So if you change your mind, you have somewhere to go. Um, we have popular programs related to our natural settings. So we have things like fisheries and wildlife management, um, environmental studies and sustainability, but also things like nursing, art and design, criminal justice, sports science, a large array of business programs, um, and medicinal plant chemistry, which is the first of its kind in the nation, um, which is also complemented with our new by our new program, indoor agriculture as well. So whatever it is that you're studying, you're gonna get a hands-on learning experience right away because we want you to figure out what it is that you love so you can get more specific and really dive in and what you don't love so that you can change your mind and shift to the right program. Um, you're gonna be working with real people in professional settings um, with real equipment. You're gonna get um, experience in the real world so that when you leave Northern, that internship, that job, that study abroad experience, has prepared you to take your next steps, grad school, um, kind of paving your own way, joining the professional world, again, whatever it is that you decide to do and you figure out you wanna do. So for students who are looking at this fall, you know, we have a lot of juniors on this call, but if you are looking at this fall, um, Northern was face-to-face -face this past fall for instruction and um, is currently face-to-face -face this current semester and plans to be so again this fall. 
So let's talk about student life. Um, so I already mentioned that students are outside all year round. So they're um, hiking, they're biking, they're rock climbing, they're ice climbing, surfing, sailing, camping, all sorts of things. But there's tons to experience indoors too. So we have over 300 different student organizations to choose from that are academic or non-academic. It's up to you. Um, we offer leadership programs. So some are credit bearing and come with a stipend. There's also tons of community service and volunteering. All of these things are a really big part of Northern and who we are. Um, and of course, under normal circumstances, we also have a lot of events happening on campus too. So um, the things that'll keep you busy as a spectator or as a participant. So the arts, um, concert, things like concerts, things like that, but also um, athletics. So ranging from esports to football, but really you name it. Um, what's most important to us at Northern is um, we're a safe, welcoming community, regardless of your experience, your background, your identity, or your beliefs. So let's talk about money. This is important, um, especially in times of a pandemic. Um, so for our out-of-state students, our tuition and fees, room and board amount to about $28,300 per year. The average financial aid package for our out-of-state students is around $19,400. And that can include um, some of our merit-based scholarships. Uh, for instance, our National Academic Award brings that out-of-state rate much closer to in-state for tuition, as well as our Wildcat Achievement Awards. Um, and this year, we're awarding our scholarships without test scores and with test scores. But moving forward, we are also test blind, like Catholic. Um, so that means that even if you submit a test score, we're not going to look at it when we make an admission decision or we decide your scholarships. Uh, we offer, also offer competitive scholarships, including our presidential scholars competition, which ranges from $1,000 to a full ride and other free money opportunities as well. We would really love for you to come visit, however that works for you. So we do have virtual visits available. We are also offering on-campus visits too, in a limited capacity. Um, but I think that when you visit a school, all of us here want you to find the school that's the right fit for you. And the best way to do that is to get a feel for it. The best way to do that is visit however you can. Um, and I think that when you come and you check out a school on a campus, you can um, find your right fit. And there is a right fit, a perfect school for you out there. So my name is Erica. Again, I work with all of our students on the West Coast. If you'd like to get more information, you can scan the QR code here. Um, but otherwise, I'll put my information in the chat. Thanks so much. Thank you. In the time we have left, we're going to go through a couple of questions and answers. So I'll put up the first question here. And we'll go through all of our institutions in the order we presented. So what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And hi, Michael Decker from Loyola, Maryland again. And I think if I could give one bit of advice, don't say this is my number one choice, my number two choice, my number three choice. Just say these are the schools that I'm looking at because in the long run, it'll be a lot less stress for you if you don't get into that first choice or if your second choice has a better financial aid or better um, scholarship package for you. So that's my little hint for you. Thank you, Larry from University of Maryland. All right, hello everyone. Uh, my advice is to work closely with your admission counselors. Uh, I hope that you all took our emails on our uh, chat feature function um, and get to know us. Um, make sure uh, to email us if you have any questions. Uh, we are here for you, so. Thank you, Catherine. I think mine would be to stay organized. Um, every school has different deadlines for the application process, the financial aid process. And so you don't want to miss those deadlines because sometimes that can mean a missed opportunity. So however your way of getting organized is, I just recommend making a list of each school's specific you know, deadlines and all that. And it just really helps make the process a little bit less stressful that way. Thank you. Next up, Albion College. Yeah, in addition to what everyone's already said, um, Erica kind of hinted at this at the end of her presentation, but I know that it can be a very logical decision when you're choosing your college, but also don't be afraid to listen to your heart and listen to how you're feeling throughout the process. Um, you're going to know how you feel when you either get on a campus or do a virtual visit, so definitely listen to that part of it because there is a right college for everyone. You're going to find the place where you belong and you want to make sure that you really feel good about the community that you're joining. Thank you. Erica? 
I think I, um, Dana, you stole mine. <laughs> um, I, cause it's a good one. So I'm glad uh, it's, it's really good advice. But I think too, what I would say to everybody is when you visit schools, you can start to really narrow things down. So all experience will help you to figure out like, oh, I like this. I don't like this. I like this to piece together the institution that is the perfect fit for you because there is one out there. So visit, get a feeling, pay attention to your gut, pay attention to your heart. Um, but also think about how does it, how does this size feel? How does this um, class size feel? How's this location feel? Um, to figure out what you are gonna like the best because that's how you're gonna be the most successful. Thank you. On to our second question. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus starting at the top? Michael Decker again. And I would say it actually takes place around this time of year. Our campus is super green and being from Southern California, I'm not used to super green, especially in November. And they actually will do for St. Patrick's Day, they actually have a petting farm that comes on the campus, which it's kind of crazy, but kind of fun. Just um, it's spring, it's green. It's awesome to see people with their goat, little goats and holding all the cute little animals. That's one of my favorite ones that happen um, during this time of year. Thank you, Larry. Yes, um, I definitely agree with Michael. Um, the best time around um, to be in Maryland or in DC areas during this time. Uh, we do have the Cherry Blossom Festival coming up, uh, but I know that was travel restrictions, but it is the best time to explore around campus as well, the DC area. And so um, during this time around, it, it's, it's really nice out in the East Coast. So it is one of the best ca um, campus traditions. So. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah, to kind of echo that, I mean, it's just, it's also been so nice here this past week too. Um, but we have something called Cardinal Palooza or mascots of Cardinals. Um, and it's at the end of the semester, strike four students go into finals and it's just this giant like barbecue and celebration of the semester. Um, the students are all out on our lawn. Um, usually we have like a picture perfect day for it. We get really lucky with that. Um, and it's just a great way just to see the Catholic community come together and there's always music and fun, um, you know, things going on. So it's always great to see everyone come together before they head to finals and then go home for the summer. Thank you. Dana? Yeah, so also on a similar vein, um, ours is an end of the spring kind of celebration of the end of the year, really celebrating the seniors. It's called Day of Woden. Um, so they cancel classes. They have a huge celebration out on the quad. It's leading up to commencement weekend. Um, and then that week as well, they have what's called the big show. So we alternate between bringing a comedian and a really big live musician to campus. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a really fun time of year. If you couldn't tell, we're all very excited for sunshine and spring out here. <laughs> Thank you. Erica? I am going to go against the grain here and say the fall. Um, I love the fall up in the where we are in Marquette because it's so beautiful. So the picture behind me is um, from the fall. So we have great fall colors. But we also have um, a big make a difference day, a volunteering day that we have on campus where everybody gets involved and you go and you um, you go out into the community and um, spend the day doing that with a group of your buddies. Um, and it, it's just pretty awesome. Thank you. On to our last question. Give an interesting fun fact about your school, Michael. Interesting fun fact about Loyola, Maryland, and, or Loyola University, Maryland. I know we talked a little bit earlier about our fitness and aquatic center. Michael Phelps actually trained for the Olympics in our swimming pool. So that's one quick fact for us. Thank you, Larry. Uh, Jim Henson, founder of the Muppets. I know this is one of my go-to interesting fact of uh, University of Maryland. Um, he is a graduate from UMD. So. Very good. Next up, Catherine. Um, we've had three popes visit campus. The most recent was Pope Francis in 2015. Very good. Dana, what would you have for us next? So at Albion, we actually own a 300 acre um, equestrian facility. So we own 40 of our own horses. And then we just added eight emotional support goats. That is not a joke. <laughs> um, Clancy and Duff are owned by our president actually. Um, so we're very excited about that. Last but not least. 
So um, Howard Schultz, who is the former chairman and CEO of Starbucks is a Northern alum. And so we have our own separately operated and owned Starbucks on campus. Very good, thank you so much. Well, that's going to conclude our fair for today. I wanna to thank everybody for joining. Please note that we do have a quick survey available. So it's a, a four question survey. So please take that if you have the time. Also note that again, there's more sessions available for you. So if you have interest, please go ahead and sign up for those. Lastly, note here, the recording is available and will be available at the StriveScan website at strivescan.com WACAC. Hope everybody enjoys the rest of your Sunday and have a great day.